fund accounting number one, appropriations, encumbrance, and property taxes. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. We're on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. Here's our email and our phone number. This is a new uh, group of topics called fund accounting, which is typically done by both governments and nonprofits. Most of the data I have here refers to uh, government-type entities, most of the examples of this. So the first thing we'd like to talk about is some of the basic journal entries. And the first thing we need to know is that for a budget, in a fund accounting setting, we appropriate money. So how do we do that? Well, we have an appropriation, money that we expect to bring in to fund a project. We may have estimated revenue from some revenue source like taxes or fees. And the difference between the revenue and the appropriation is a, budget, a budgetary fund balance. That is an account we're going to find in the, in the asset report, the balance sheet type report for fund accounting. So it says in bold here the purpose of the century to record the appropriated budget and it assumes that revenue is greater for expenses. So maybe the fees from pool memberships to the municipal swimming pool are going to be more than the money appropriated to build the swimming pool. And there's a note underneath. It said this estimate will be compared with actual results and therefore we're going to get a variance analysis. We talked about variance analysis exclu extensively in the cost accounting section, and we're going to have a variance analysis when we do government budgeting as well. It says, as a result, the normal debits and credits are reversed. That is, revenue is debited for the increase rather than being credited. Now, an encumbrance means that we're uh, tagging, segregating, spending. We are tagging, segregating, marking some specific spending for the money that we appropriated. So in that case, the budgetary fund balance is debited, and we have a reserve account for the encumbrance. That means that money is reserve parts set aside, maybe to pay some sort of contractor. The, the explanation for this journal entry is to record encumbrance for a purchase order. So let's say that uh, the person who's pouring concrete for the municipal swimming pool sends us, per, sends us uh, an estimate. We send in a purchase order to buy the cement. This is the journal entry that we're going to make to recognize that we're setting aside money, $100,000, to pay that cement pourer's purchase order. That's what we do to record the encumbrance in blue. Now, what do we do when the goods are received? So now the cement shows up at the job site. Well, we do two things. First of all, we reverse this entry because we no longer need the reserve. Now we're actually going to spend the money. So we debit to decrease the, encumber the reserve for encumbrance that we credited. And budgetary fund balance reserve for encumbrance is going to be credited. So now these two entries offset each other. And now we've spent the money. So we have an expenditure like an expense account. It's a debit. And we have a payable like any other account payable. And that's to record receipt of the goods that we haven't paid cash for yet. Now, it could be that we get to the end of a fiscal year, what I have in red here, and that we have an encumbrance or a money that we've earmarked set aside left over. And in the example I have, the check written for the expense was less than what we encumbered. So what do we do? Well, if we go back up to the detail, we see that we reserved $100,000 and we only expended ninety-five. dollars So we have a balance of $5,000. So we're going to debit encumbrance and debit budgetary fund balance for encumbrance. And it says here to remove the budgetary amounts related to the outstanding encumbrances at the end of the fiscal year. Okay? That's how we take care of things at the end of the fiscal year, which we haven't read off to the left. Then in the next year, 
we're going to reestablish a reserve fund balance related to the any outstanding encumbrances. So we have a restricted fund balance, unrestricted fund balance, excuse me, and a fund re balance reserve for encumbrance of 10000 This is similar to the account that we did up here. We reserved a fund balance for earmarked spending when the goods were ordered. And down here, we're again earmarking money by creating fund balance reserve for encumbrance. And it says related to outstanding encumbrances at the at the fis end of the fiscal year intended to honor the next fiscal year. Okay, so at the end of the fiscal year, we're telling the statement reader, oh, by the way, we're going to have $10,000 that is encumbered that relates to the next fiscal year. So we're taking it out of unrestricted money. A basic concept in fund accounting is, is that we have unrestricted funds that we can spend for whatever the um, whatever the mission is of the entity, whether it's a government or nonprofit. And then we have restricted money where the spending has to, is restricted to one type of spending or another. So unrestricted can be spent on anything that fits the mission of the government or nonprofit. Restricted means it's got some strings attached. So what do I do at the beginning of the next year? Well, I'm going to record encumbrance, fund balance reserve encumbrance from the prior fiscal year. And then I'm going to do fund balance reserve for encumbrance, unrestricted fund balance. This entry reverses, this entry here, reverses this entry. So this entry that I've highlighted was a heads up, hey, we've got some encumbrances that you're going to see next year. We reverse that entry. We no longer need it. And then we make the entry to encumber and record the fund balance reserve which is the exact same thing we were doing way up here. This is the same type of entry. Earmarking money, we've got it locked in to be spent on something specific. Here, we're earmarking money. We're recording the encumbrance. The last thing I talk about here is, is property taxes. And as an example, property taxes are assessed and used to pay for almost all school districts. That's the most common use of a property tax. So your home is valued, you pay an assessed valuation, a certain number of cents per thousand dollar value of your home. That money comes in and the number one area it's used to pay for is school districts. So what we're going to see on the next presentation is more on property accounting, but for now, you can see we've got an entry where we have tax receivable debit, we have revenue credit, and we have an estimate for uncollectible. So this entry looks a lot like receivables, revenue, and allowance for uncollectible for a for-profit company. And the explanation is to record property tax revenue to a general fund. The general fund is the catch-all uh, account in government and fund accounting, the general fund. And then we have lots of other funds that are more specific. That's as far as we're going to get on part one. Uh, we have a section on the website called Not on the Web, which is complete uh, video courses. This happens to be the one that I was doing for options. But we have complete video courses on all topics including fund accounting. If you want the Excel spreadsheets only from the things we put on YouTube, we have a content library where you can buy those. Here's our YouTube channel. We have a complete list of all the videos that we have on our website by type. For live tutoring and chat sessions, here's the website, the email address, and the phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time when we continue on fund accounting. Thanks very much.